We will have a moment of silent meditation and pledge to the flag. Before we get started, our thoughts and prayers are with the Roan County football family, the community, and we're really sorry, and our thoughts and prayers are with them at this time. We'll call the meeting to order. All three commissioners are here. We will now have consents and approvals. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, there are new exonerations this week. Wow. Um, General County vouchers or vouchers general county one hundred three thousand two hundred three dollars and ten cents nine one one cash seventeen thousand three hundred fifty five dollars and twelve cents chestnut ridge park four thousand eight hundred twenty four dollars and fifty six cents mason dixon park six hundred purchasing card vouchers general county twenty seven thousand seventy three dollars and five cents cole severance fifty seven dollars thirty cents nine one one ten thousand eighty dollars thirty six cents Chestnut Ridge Park, $632.60. Camp Muffley, $1,067.92. Mason Dixon Park, $546.35 for a voucher total of $165,440.36. Um, we have budget revisions for state approval for the general fund, the county commission, um, county clerk's elections, and in-house general fund. We have the parks. Um, position vacancies for boards and authorities. We have the Board of Zoning Appeals, Planning Commission, Development Authority, Camp Muffley Advisory Board, Abandoned and Lapidated Enforcement Agency. Um, we also have fiduciary, fiduciary orders for September 18th. Um, and we have also another item for fiduciary he hearing and also two letters regarding an estate. Okay, uh, I'm, let's yep. deal with everything except for the two letters and the estate. state. Yes. Okay, I move to approve. Second. Proper move and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes. Okay, so let's go on address this. Each of the letters. Yes. Okay, um, the first letter is from Ray Yakel regarding the Shirley God Godfrey estate. Um, he's representing Tonya Baird one yes. of the heirs to the estate, and he is wanting a fiduciary commissioner. Okay, so we had taken this up in commission a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Right. And had uh, moved to approve a fiduciary commissioner. And that's my understanding that one has been approved. Mr. Weyakel just may not have been aware of it. Yes, well, they've all three been approved. I mean, they been appointed, I'm sorry. Yes, they got appointed, and only one has taken their oath. And we, um, he just did that last week. Okay. So it is scheduled after the meeting today. We're appointing him to, to this, this matter. To yes. this matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the second letter is from um, George Armistead, also regarding the Godfrey estate. So. so basically, it states that it will come to a resolution between he and Mr. Yakel. So it, it appears that the fiduciary commissioner may not be necessary in this case from what I read that the uh, that Mr. Armistead has presented here. Well, it was the commission had already voted to approve a fiduciary commissioner a couple weeks ago, so yes. I assume we just should let that run its course. Mm -hmm. Any recommendation? That would be my recommendation. Yes. Well, I've not seen these letters, so I can get them to you. Yeah. I, yeah, we need to get those for our file, and then okay. um, this I'm just not arrived. This yeah, this just arrived round. this morning. Oh, I was going to say I yeah. wasn't aware this, this of the second from, letter. Uh, George Armistead. Okay, so we we officially uh, requested a fiduciary agent. So since that's probably in the works, how about we we continue that process? But the, could you just talk to the two lawyers to see if that's still going to be needed or not? Because if we can, would hold off one week to do it, then maybe then we would have, it's the last two paragraphs 
It appears that they now might resolve, but we've already set it in motion. So let's just not, how about we don't do anything and we ask you to intercede for us to see which is the best direction to go. Is that yes. comfortable? Yeah, okay. that's fine. Okay, good. Thank you very much for doing that, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that we have another. Yes, um, set a hearing date for the author, author, Arthur P. Scotchell estate. And that date is? Um, November 7th at 10.30. Okay, do I have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Bob, we moved in second. All those in favor say aye. 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 It passes. The 7th at 10.30? The 7th yeah, at 10.30. Yeah, November 7th, so Thursday. Bring a lot of coffee. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Introduction of new employees, personnel changes. First, we have Carrie Blaney and introducing Christopher Cole Dorsey. Come on down. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to introduce to you Chris Dorsey, who is a new full-time employee with the County Clerk's Office. Chris has a degree in history from Marshall University. He's going to be working in our records management department. Uh, he started on Monday. So he Move will for be approval. Full second. Time with Bob can move the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Welcome. Well, welcome, Thank Chris. You. Glad to have you. Okay. Thank you. Do we have anyone here from Youth Services Center? Okay, come on down. First, we have William Smith, relief worker part time, and Jamie Davis, relief. Relief worker part time, is that Good correct? Morning. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, do I have a motion to accept? Yeah, move to approve. Second. Bob, a move and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We also have, just so we just want to transfer from part time to full time, I just want to make sure I'm correct. <coughs> Here we go. Rachel Arbogast and Rhonda, okay, I'm going to ruin this. <laughs> Bottle of Sham Walimu. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's close enough. We apologize. We the apologize point. for the destroying that last name. You can tell me later. I mean, she's laughing. Are Move. you here? Could you tell me? Could you say, come up and just say the correct name so I, I don't do no, it wrong? Her. Oh, that's not her. Oh, okay. Everyone's just laughing. Okay. <laughs> that's bad. Move for approval. Second. Probably move to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we're on that. How about Perry to Christopher? Transfer part-time <coughs> victims witness program employee to full-time. I hope your name is a lot easier than that. <laughs> much easier, <laughs> Miss Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Edwards. <laughs> um, good morning. Good morning. So, Miss Edwards has been a part-time employee in our victim advocates office um, for for a bit now, and yes, she, even though um, she has really worked on some difficult cases recently, she still has agreed to come on full time as our grant one of our grant positions in that office, and so we are here asking to modify her employment from okay. part time to full time. Move for approval. Second. Both have moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Miss Edwards. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, at this time we will have comments from the public. If anyone would like to come down and speak, you can state your name, your address, and you have four minutes. Come on down. Great, we're excited. Thank you. Hi, right, how are you doing today? Greetings. Uh, I've been here before. My name is Duane Nichols. I live at 330 Dreamcatcher Circle, Morgantown, uh, near the winery, out in Stewart, off of Stewartstown Road. Okay. Uh, we have... Uh, two coal-fired power plants within view of our community and the prevailing winds come that direction. So we're already inundated with steam plumes, with carbon dioxide, and with other emissions. It's been proposed that additional power plants be put in, in our region. And uh, there's concern for that primarily because we live in a new era. Today, is unlike any time in the history of mankind. Uh, I feel that's uh, because uh, at uh, 60, I'm sorry, I'm 82 years old, and uh, maybe the oldest person in the room, and uh, I've had a chance in my professional career to work on coal research, natural gas research, environmental problems, as a chemical engineer, 
I understand what Joseph Fourier understood back in 1824 when he realized the greenhouse effect. And we all know what the greenhouses are. Uh, Al Gore, 20, effectively 20 years ago, realized that this was a national problem and uh, he brought it uh, pr pretty much more out into the open than anybody has for a long time. But the point is carbon dioxide is still increasing. Methane is even going up even faster. And uh, yet, uh, whenever wells are drilled, there's leakage. Whenever compressors work, there's off gases. Whenever gas is combusted, there's still residual pollution comes from it because it's not 100% complete combustion. So I think the kids of the world are realizing when they called for the global climate strike that there is a new era. Things aren't like they were before. And I believe that we're not isolated from the rest of the universe. We're part of it. So what I'm supposed to do here is say, I'm going to try, if my health permits, to be down in front of this building this Friday at noon with, with a sign that says that I'm concerned. And I don't know if this commission is concerned. I know that the Morgantown City Council has gone on record to express their concern. Um, with regards, uh, I, I'm wondering if we couldn't have a public meeting on the proposed Longview operation. I think that would be appropriate. When Longview first came in, uh, we, we had a public meeting in this building before we had a pilot agreement. I'm here to request a, a report on what's the status of the pilot agreement. I'm here uh, to say that uh, there, there is a knowledge nowadays that, that this is a new time and that the decisions, processes, decisions we've made before are, are not appropriate to be made in the same way that we did before. Uh, I, I'm not here to be critical. I'm here to be helpful. I'm, I'm a citizen, long-standing uh, member of the Montegay Historical Society, uh, a leader in the uh, Monongahela area watershed compact and an organizer of the Clean Air Coalition. Okay. So the, these are <coughs> terribly important issues and I uh, invite and request your help, cooperation and uh, uh, leadership. Thank you. Thank you for your you. concern, Mr. Nichols. We'll take that under advisement. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Seeing none, we will move on. We now have a proclamation, National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. We have a proclamation, and in the individuals, please come down and who would like to be there. And if you want to state your name and who is with you, or you can do that afterwards, whichever you'd like. Why don't you state who you are first? <laughs> Hi, my name is Tori Ann Grail. I'm currently Miss West Virginia, and my platform for Miss America is childhood cancer. Great. I'm Tiffany Batten, and I have the pleasure of being a mom to a childhood cancer survivor, 10 years cancer-free. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> I'm Leslie Batten. I was diagnosed with cancer, and <laughs> and we're glad you're here. You. Very glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Hi. 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 Hello, my name is Andrea Stevens, um, and this is my son, Benjamin Stevens. Hi, Ben. He was diagnosed with neuroblastoma this April at Ruby Memorial Hospital, um, which is a um, neuroendocrine system cancer, very rare. Um, and he is doing amazingly well. But I also have the privilege of being a mom of a childhood cancer survivor and current warrior in our county. My name is Michelle Kuhn. <clears throat> My son Johnny Kuhn was diagnosed with cancer in January of 2000. He passed away in March of 2005 of a brain cancer. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, 
my name is Dr. Patrick Tombach. I'm one of the pediatric cancer doctors at um, WVU Children's Hospital that we're building, and I'm very lucky to be able to do this, and I appreciate you guys listening because this is an amazing thing, and everyone who does this is just super helpful, helping us fight this terrible disease and all of them. So thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yes. Good morning. I'm Anita Graham. I'm a pediatric hematology oncology social worker at the Children's Hospital here, and I work with the families that we serve every day. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to read the proclamation to you. Whereas in 2019, childhood cancer remains the number one disease-related killer of our nation's children, and each year cancer kills more children than asthma, juvenile diabetes, cystic fibrosis, and pediatric AIDS combined. And whereas nationally, 43 children between birth and the age of 20 will be diagnosed with cancer every day, totaling more than 15,780 children per year. And in West Virginia, there are more than 75 children diagnosed annually, children treated at the WVU Medicine Children's Hospital in Morgantown, Edwards Comprehensive Cancer Center at Hoops Children's Hospital, Cabell Huntington Hospital in Huntington, and CAMC Children's Cancer Center with physician services provided by WVU Physicians of Charleston. And whereas even though the childhood cancer community is making remarkable breakthroughs in cancer treatments and improving survival rates. One out, of eight, one out of every eight children nationwide continue to die daily as a result of childhood cancer. On average, there are 71 potential life years lost when a child dies of cancer. And whereas children, childhood cancer occurs regularly, randomly, and spares no eth ethnic group, socioeconomic class, or geographic region. Nationally, the incidence of cancer among adolescents and young adults is increasing at a greater rate than any other age group except those over 65 years. And whereas a childhood cancer diagnosis is a family diagnosis and is a tremendous emotional and financial burden for the fi family and child to bear, the average cost of a stay in a hospital for a child with cancer is $40,000 per stay. On average, cancer costs almost five times as much as hospitalizations for other pediatric conditions. And whereas since 1980, only four cancer medications have been specifically developed for children, less than 4% of federal government's total funding for cancer research is dedicated to childhood cancers each year. And whereas National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month recognizes the courage and compassion of those children and their families throughout West Virginia and the nation who have, are currently battling childhood cancer. And whereas all children affected by cancer, their families, medical professionals, caregivers, and friends join West Virginia Kids Cancer Crusaders, Inc. to continue the collaborative efforts of a support network, raise awareness and funds for those affected by childhood cancer, and make a positive difference for patients, families, and survivors in the future. Now, therefore, we, the members of the County Commission of Monongalia County, West Virginia, <coughs> do hereby declare September 2019 as National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in the Mountain State and encourage all citizens to join us in this observance. Thank you. Thank Move you. for approval. Second. Well, for moving second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We want to thank you all for being here and want to thank the doctors who perform amazing miracles and we hope that we're able to cure this in the future. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank if you. anyone wants to say anything, you're more than welcome. Or we're not. <laughs> I can talk. Um, I kind of. No, I would like. Yeah, please. I kind of um, spearheaded this initiative okay. um, with uh, West Virginia Kids Cancer Crusaders, um, which is a nonprofit out of Charleston, and they have reached out to most of the counties in the southern part of West Virginia, and haven't really gone to the north. So I took it upon myself to. Um, reach out and to contact so I'm just very excited because if you heard the statistics um, less than four percent of the um, federal government funding goes to childhood cancer um, and for the research most of this is a very grassroots effort on the parents parts and the doctors parts um, you know we all know what pink stands for in October but do you know what gold stands for in September yeah. So that's why we are here to try to shed light on that. We hope that next year this is on your agenda as well and that we can um, rally some businesses and lots of support so that Morgantown goes gold, not for WVU, but for uh, childhood cancer awareness and for these kids that are fighting for their lives. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Excellent. Would you like a picture with the proclamation? Yes, could Yes, we? <laughs> well, that's what, <coughs> yes. And would they like to come up too? Yes. Yeah, we, oh, we'll do it down here, it's easier. Yeah. We'll go down, yeah.
easier. We'll be all here. Come on back here. Oh, okay. Sure. Here, Thank you. Yeah, Okay, we have a little bit more. Okay. Ready? And if you're allowed, I have a mint for you. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. My mom died of cancer, so this is a very I am just I choose to have this. And if you don't want to stay, we understand. Yes. Yeah. 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 <coughs> I sent a picture. He enjoyed it. <sighs> Some, sometimes this day can be very rewarding as being county commissioners. And this is one. Okay, we now have proclamation. We now have Mr. Andrew Gasmar. Gasbridge. Director of Planning, update on status of proposed subdivision regulations. Come on down. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I'm a little broken up too. My brother died of leukemia at age three in the 60s. Oh. But thanks to awareness and efforts, leukemia is actually rather treatable to an extent yes. that people can have a, an actual life when they're diagnosed with it. But mm. yeah. it is, it's emotional. So give me a second here. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I truly understand. So, yes, the subdivision ordinance draft that I handed out in uh, August to you all and to the uh, Planning Commission and other uh, people that have been on committees uh, this, uh, in re this regards, they've had a chance to look at what has been improved from their suggestions. There have been a number of improvements for clarity. Uh, I believe that you have seen that really what is being regulated really hasn't changed. Most of the comments have been we need to make sure this is clearer, easier to use, uh, we know what we need to do. So to that effect, uh, you have there in front of you uh, a sample of the guidelines in toolkit for explaining what the legalese version of draft ordinance, sub, uh, subdivision ordinance might entail, uh, we hope to entail, and how we would interpret it, how you would do it, written in much more common average person English with examples and scenarios that you can't put in uh, subdivision regulations. So to that end, that's been very warmly received. Uh, in front of you, I have also submitted a tentative outline of a timeline for what might be the best way forward to adopt if we so choose to do so. And in that context, I'd like to point out a couple quick things. First of all, this is very preliminary, very draft oriented. Uh, I want to say that the comments that I've been getting back, once you finally start pushing people and say there are deadlines approaching that actually got a lot of feedback because everybody's busy. The comments have been very positive, well-meaning. I personally have not been approached by people trying to undermine anything. I think that the comments have been well thought and uh, well regarded. And we are trying to bring that in. But as a result, they have flagged that there's still some bits that need to be clarified. In other words, so the language, they understand where it's trying to go, but they don't necessarily see that it is immediately clear or free from all discussion, particularly the development community. So I encourage us on this timeline to have a round table with consultants and the lawyers that you have uh, engaged as consultants for this project to kind of get around and make sure we finalize the language. I think that's well worth it to do so because we are very close. People are liking what they see. They just say, I don't know that I would have seen that written this way. So we're very close to getting over. And dare I hope to conjecture getting it supported 
I mean, very much embraced by the development community because I think they're very close to uh, embracing this. So with that change, and the reason why I'm talking about that with you all is that I suggest we move slightly back the timeline for adoption from what I had proposed roughly in August to say the second week of November of 2019 might be the target mm -hmm. date for a final plan before the county commission for public hearing and commission vote. And then we would ad adjust accordingly such that instead of January 1 being, if, if it were uh, adopted, give it the inaction date, and that would give us a little bit more time. Remember that after the adoption, we still have to get a county engineer on board, we have to get a subdivision review board, and it takes time to get those things in place. So there needs to be a little bit of a delay. And so we've made those tweaks. Um, I hope this meets your approval as a rough timeline, but particularly I think in order to get us over the finish line, we need at least to try a concrete date. Mm -hmm. And I suggest in bold, I put the second week of November uh, 2019, which if it's at this time slot would be the 13th of November as being a targeted date for a public hearing for the final draft and that would hopefully rally the the development community and, and the public to, to say let's get it to a, a state. It's never perfect as we know there's always a typo here and a something to improve and as you can see also on the timeline there will be a year later a review to see how we did. Uh, so that's my ask for you today. Uh, would you uh, Please consider this. Did anyone want, would you like to discuss? No, I appreciate you. And mm -hmm. again, I appreciate all, all your efforts to outreach. Um, uh, anybody that I've been in contact with that's, that's uh, asked me about it, I've directed them to you. I know you've met with multiple developers. Again, we're trying to get the information. And the last time we had a public hearing, everybody in the room, <laughs> everybody said, we need something, but, well, this is, this is something, and we're, we're, we're trying to get people to actually pay attention and give us valid input, and let's, let's come up with something that makes sense, but also, you know, um, uh, helps us develop uh, in a more efficient way and more, uh, with more clarity um, going forward. So appreciate all your effort in this. Andrew, you've been a, a breath, of, breath of fresh air to this project, and uh, I appreciate your willingness to meet with anybody we direct to you. Yeah. I, I think this is really uh, something that is a, 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 a good way of making sure we have included everyone's input. Uh, to that end, I, I'm going to the Home, uh, Home Builders Association on Thursday evening, so I know you're going as well. Uh, I think it's fitting that we present ourselves uh, to be able to listen to individuals that may, you know, may want to come to us. I also want to compliment you. The word that, adjective that's used uh, when they, people say they talk to you is you're very flexible. And this has been something that I think all three of us have been wanting. And I think that makes you more accessible by doing that. Only one thing I'd like to twinge, <coughs> tweak a little bit. We might want to consider on that second week of November whenever we have actually two public hearings. This is what we've done in the past. One during this time and one in the evening. Just so that way we offer both. And I think that was the only suggestions that were always made. And I think that's the only thing besides that. I like that it's, you know, you're going countywide. You're giving people opportunity. And that would be the only thing when we come up with that date. But we would have it too. So I want to make sure the public knows we would have one during the day. And what, if that's okay with the other commissioners. Certainly. Yeah. Okay. Well, we thank you. This is great. Yeah. We appreciate it. Look forward to working with you. Well, thank, thank you very much. Um, one, uh, one caveat just to keep in mind. Yeah. We need 30 days for such a thing. Uh, notice or notice when we announce. So okay. When you come up with that date, and remember, 30 Thank days you. for the state statute. Thank you very much. Okay. 30 days Thanks. in the hole. Okay. <laughs> that's right. And uh, the that's for the public hearing. Public, public, public hearing. hearing. But for we have we we post 30 days prior that we're going to have a meeting regarding this, and then you you have you currently have the subdivision. The current draft is out on your website, yes, and you're it modifying is. it. So I'd encourage people: don't yes. print off a copy. Go to that because it's still being 
uh, modified as you as you have little tweaks. Yes. And the other part is is the in addition to what you did last time, you don't have the just the yes. ordinance out there. You have a toolkit that gives people a better understanding of what what the document, the actual yes. or ordinance is attempting to do. What, so. what does it mean to the rest of us? Exactly. Yes, exactly. So there's are, lots of scenarios, examples, sample calculations. If I were doing this, what would it be like? What would the process be like if I were going through it? So I encourage anybody in the public that go to our website and dr pulls that down to look at it and realize that it's sort of the, the toolkit for, for us average people. Yeah. Is, isn't the second week of um, November, the second Wednesday of the month, your planning commission meeting? Yes. So it would be difficult to have a public hearing that night because oh, they, they would can, coincide with their... If we want to do off schedule, we can do it Thursday or... Yeah. So we'll okay. We'll, we'll, we'll work out we'll, something. We'll figure out the date. Yeah. I just want to give Maybe you the we could have a Wednesday and Thursday evening. That's good. That and gives two different options. Yeah. Or the I don't know week if you can do Thanksgiving that. Right. when everybody's off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was worried well, about. <laughs> oh, or um, what may be interesting, dare I say, since they've been integrally apart, I don't know if that's possible here, but it was in other places I've worked where you have a joint meeting. I don't know if that's possible, but well, it's they could be in the meeting. I don't think it's. Nah. Is. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah, discuss again, it again. They can change their meeting. Yeah, around, too. Uh, around this That's schedule, true. too. Yeah, or one after the other, or something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. It. Okay. Ms. Colleen Coon, we have no grants today. We have no grants. Correspondence. Okay. <clears throat> I only have one item of correspondence today. Uh, we received a packet from the town of Star City. Um, if you recall, uh, several months ago, they approached us in a work session regarding uh, modifications to their TIF project plan along Boyers Avenue. Um, they have uh, followed this, the recommendation of our bond counsel, Tom Amen, okay. and have done the steps that they needed to do. We have, have a letter, so whether, all, whether you want to go ahead and approve to move it and refer it to Tom for his review, or if you want a week to review it, and then we can do that next week, it's up to you. I move that we um, <laughs> refer it to our bond I counsel, agree. Tom Amon, to review it and <laughs> for completeness and then to report back a recommendation. <laughs> yeah. yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Good. That's Any? all correspondence. Okay. Today. Unfinished business? None. Okay. Move the new business, and we're going to remove item A at this time, and we will go to B consideration to formally accept the revised application for annexation by the town of Granville and set a date and time for a public hearing, finally. Um, they submitted new meets and bounds and those have been sent to the assessor's office um, for their um, determination. Um, yes, so let's just what, do we have it in accordance with the statute when we get an application at some point if we accept the application we have to do so in a public meeting and then that, that, that triggers the uh, setting of the date for a public meeting so I move that we accept the application and set the date for a public meeting second Bob moving second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. we've now done that so now let's uh, and I would direct it uh, our administrator rather than doing that now would set a date and inform all parties Okay, and then I can inform and, you and of yes. posting and okay yes. that's fine yes. okay at least we're going through the process okay is there any other new business no sir okay reports from any elected officials I see anyone Carrie Kelly Mike no one I know we're meeting later okay uh, reports from County Commissioners Sean I think you go first this time okay. I hope I'm on the right week um, <laughs> It's, it's um, been a fairly slow week, so I'm just going to really quickly, um, last week I had, um, after since the last meeting I had done on Thursday, I had a red team meeting. I had a meeting with the, um, we actually had our extension building meeting on Thursday last week, and then I had a meeting with the development authority. Um, My notes didn't update, so I was prepared for everything <laughs> I've done in the past week. So um, that's all I'll say about my schedule. Um, I really uh, appreciate the group that came in here for the can cancer awareness. Sometimes when you see these proclamations, 
we do these regularly for all different types of things, but when you actually see the kids and bringing the kids in that are actually victims of cancer uh, and seeing the, the families, uh, it really, um, um, you know, there's, there's not much more I can say today other than I'm happy that they came in and um, I'm proud of the, uh, to live in Morgantown where we're, we're building the new children's hospital and, and are the kind of the mecca for uh, helping these kids and uh, just kind of leave it at that. Okay. Thank you. I concur. Uh, having been in dentistry for 40 years and contact people who were in such situations, uh, it's, it makes you very uh, heartfelt to know what's going on in our community. Uh, we really have people who care and I would hope that uh, we do see uh, gold for this next year. Uh, so that's, uh, I was gone for the great part of 10 days visiting my son, so my report is also pretty short. Um, I did attend the Extension and 4-H Center meeting, uh, followed by the interview with the IT tech that we had on Tuesday. I already mentioned I'll be attending the Home Builders Association meeting on Thursday. And uh, Friday is the inspection meeting at the 4-H and Extension Center, followed by the Historical Society meeting. So that's it. Okay. Mine will be short. Also, I had a meeting on Monday at the 4-H Extension office with a possible summer program that they wanted us to at least be aware of. And also, I would be remiss that my son's birthday is today, so I want to wish him a happy birthday. And that is our meeting. Do I have a... Oh, I would oh. be remiss is this Sunday is my anniversary, so I want to thank my, <laughs> oh, wife, <laughs> my wife for 19 well. wonderful years, and um, I'm looking forward to the next 19. Happy birthday and happy anniversary, and I move right. to adjourn. Second. we be gone. Yeah. We don't sing birthday either. <laughs> no song. We are not breaking <laughs> No, out, we're so. not going to break traditional rules here.